We're back with another video from Anime World. This one is called What Are, Popu what are Popular Anime Known For? Please go check out Mr. Anime World channel. Go give him a sub, like this video if you have, and hey, let's get on to it. First one is Bleach. Bleach is known for having the best anime drip ever. I... I think that Bleach is definitely, if anything, cool. Very stylish, very aesthetic. Not in just terms of their designs, their drip, but even like their power system. The Shikai, Bankai, and not just, you know, the Soul Society people, but as well as, you know, the Espadas and the other factions. They are just so fucking cool. The plot may be a little weak because, you know, it's always saving the princess, but it is very, oh, excuse me, very cool. Next up, Full Metal Alchemist. Best starting point for anime beginners. Um, I know FMA because of my anime list and the Brigaders always trying to make sure it's number one, but Freedan has officially topped it. And there's the meme of a guy with glasses. I think he's a dad with his daughter and a dog. Yeah, it's basically that meme. Those memes that I know FMA about. Next up, Gintama. Oops, sorry. Known for parodies. Um, what do I know the Gintama for? I actually don't know anything. I straight up don't. The first time I saw this motherfucker be showing up. No, no. What I know, no, no. I know, I don't, I don't know much, but I do know that like people say that this is like a slice of life gag comedy, just kind of chill anime. And then there's serious arcs where the serious arcs are like fucking next level, like insanely good. Even though it is like slice of life, it's brain run. I hear like the serious arcs are like fucking crazy. Next up, Fate Series, known for the best animation. Yes, and that might not be true for the first Unlimited Blade Works with Studio Dean, I think, but it's basically Studio Ufotable, which is, that makes a lot more sense. Because I was trying to figure out why does Ufotable have so much budget to make Demon Slayer? But at the end of the day, they did do Fate as well, and the whole story goes Ufotable people having connections with FGO people in the Nasuverse and money laundering and stuff like that. And that's where they're getting the budget from. So basically the success of Fate Grand Order and all the fucking gotcha addicts are funding <laughs> the Demon Slayer, you know, fucking arcs too. Next up. Demon Slayer! Known for the best fight animation. Kind of, you know, funny that both series here is done by Studio Ufotable. Best fight animation? I don't know. I, I think it's definitely really good animation, but like, I wonder if other shows like Windbreaker has amazing fight choreography, but that's choreography, not animation. Depends on what you define as animation, but the fight are fucking pretty. You can't deny that the fights, the quality of the animations are amazing, but I don't know. This might be uh, up for debate with other series. Next up. The Promised Neverland. Manga was better in season two. Yep, this is the same shit I hear about, right? Um, this show, I hear that like the season two anime only ending basically ruined it. I hear season one was amazing, and then the anime only ending just fucking just botched everything. I uh, didn't the manga also go to shit or something near the end? I forget. We could still watch season one though. Next, <laughs> basically, <laughs> Binlin Saga, and I have no enemies. And you know what? Having the main theme of the story of I Have No Enemies being the thing that people know this show for, I think is a great thing. This isn't just like a meme, it's like a, it's like a lifestyle, it's an ideology. Knowing that the only people that go out to, you know, try to hate other people and cause harm are those people that has been harmed. And in order to stop that cycle, you need to get over it and understand that you have no enemies. And then no one can hurt you. That was Cap. I have no enemies, my motherfucking dad died. <laughs> well, anyways, that's that's besides the point. Anyways, next. Black Clover. Known for Asta's creeps. <laughs> yeah. This anime is very hated because Asta's annoying in the beginning, right? The sheer amount of him yelling is what pisses people off a lot, right? But I hear the anime is actually pretty decent. There's a lot of hype scenes happening for battle shonens like this. <laughs> no game, no life. What is it known for? <laughs> known for the lack of a second season. Yeah, pretty much. That and the fact that the artist, I think, like traced the drawings. I think there was a little bit of controversy there, but yeah, unfortunate. Next up. Dragon Ball. Everyone knows Goku. Of course, I think Dragon Ball 
pretty much the godfather of all battle shonens, right? Everybody knows Goku, everybody knows what Dragon Ball is. Dragon Ball truly does transcend anime. It transcends language barriers. My Hero Academia! Known for toxic community which can traumatize you. Is this a ship between the boys? Basically, I don't know. I hear a lot of things about My Hero Academia, you know, fan base of how toxic they are to the point they're throwing sending like fucking death threats to the mangaka and shit like that, but... You know, that's just simply what happens when you pander to an audience of young kids and you get popular, right? What do you expect from a bunch of fucking stupid kids? I think that there's definitely some Fujos at work here though. Yeah, the Fujos definitely are going crazy with these ships beyond that. It's not just one thing. I think there's a combination of many things, but hey, the manga's over now. Next up. Yeah, pretty much. Future Diary, Mirai Nikki. This pose is pretty much like the base template of like Yandere faces. Like so many characters just get inspired off of this one. One of these days, guys, vote this shit in and we'll watch. We'll watch one of these days. Next up. <laughs> Next up is Goblin Slayer, known for the first episode. That's right. I think a lot of people went crazy during the release of this shit, right? It's like redo of Healer, right? It's just those controversies due to some goblin backshots happening. <laughs> oh god. Next up. Yu-Gi-Oh! Known for card games, yes. I think one of the first cartoon shows that I watched when I first immigrated here after just turning the TV on. Was it Pokemon or Yu-Gi-Oh? I forget, but I do remember watching random Yu-Gi-Oh episodes here and there. Classic, bro. Classic. But people would consider this like a cartoon. It's a Japanese animation, but because the, the people that grew up watching this watch it in English, though, it's like, quote-unquote, cartoon. It's the same shit. Next up. <laughs> Seven deadly frames. Seven deadly frames, baby! Yeah, the studio change just fucking dropped the ball so hard. Season one, I hear, was pretty good, but then near the end, you know, seven deadly frames. Wah, wah. Like, this is not Microsoft Paint art, even though it looks like it. This is straight up from the anime, bro. What the fuck is this? JoJo's. Knowns for memes and poses, absolutely. So many random JoJo's memes and clips that I've seen without even actually seeing JoJo. Like, what the fuck is JoJo all about, bro? What is happening? This is the little little one, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is the dude that goes little 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 with the fucking tongue. Like, what warrants that to happen in the episode, right? What kind of character buildup led to this guy tongue flickering on cherries? Did he lose a bet? I don't fucking know. Next up. Jujutsu Kaisen. <laughs> what is it known for? <laughs> Gojo Satoru. I mean, that's true, right? People love Gojo. People absolutely adore Gojo. What else do I know Jujutsu Kaisen for? Hot take? I like Ghetto more than Gojo. I've subscribed to Ghetto's ideology of calling the goddamn monkeys. Nah, I'd win. For sure, for sure. Oh, Boruto! Known for a large number of filler episodes. Hey, just like your dad, Boruto. Yo, Boruto's taken inspired just like Boruto's dad. Both fucking filler bullshit, bro. <laughs> yep. Well, is there actually that many filler? And as much as people shit on the filler of Naruto, hear me out. Hear me out. I think that the filler is actually good because it allows for the actual canon episodes to be well paced and action heavy. Compared to One Piece, where they try to avoid that, and in turn, the pacing suffers so much where each canon episode is so lackluster. I think that fillers does serve a purpose, especially for long-running shonens like this, where you can plan ahead and give more actual, in like, meaningful episodes rather than trying to stretch everything too thin. Next up. Akame got killed. Everyone dies, pretty much. <laughs> yep, I mean, listen. We just met as that, but it's seeming like everyone's just gonna die. Like, everyone you love, don't get attached to anybody. They will all just fucking die. And next up, One Piece! World building and never ending story. Well, not really never ending. It's gonna end pretty soon. And then, which studio is picking up to get a remake? One Piece. World building and never ending story. Yeah, people are too intimidated to get into this series due to the sheer volume of episodes and the chapters. But here's the thing. Whenever I hear people and they're like, oh man, there's too many episodes. I can't, you know, there's, I, there's no way I can catch up. The point of getting into One Piece is not to catch up, right? Think about any good show that you've binged, something that just was so peak to you that you watched every day, 
and then you ran out of episodes and now you feel empty and you're trying to fill that hole, that void in your heart by researching online and asking people, what are some shows similar to this? And some people will recommend some shows and you'll check it out, hoping that it's going to feel that same, you know, vibe, but it's never going to be the same. And just remember that and realize One Piece has so much content. It's a never ending journey. You're supposed to enjoy the journey. It's not about getting to the destination as fast as it can. The fact that there's hundreds and hundreds of chapters and episodes for you to farm is an amazing thing. This should not be a deterrent. You should be excited. But most people view, you know, watching animes or reading manga as like some sort of productivity job that like, oh, there's too much. There's no way I can finish. Just fucking take your time and watch it, bro. What are you fucking rushing for? It's better if you have more of it than less of it. Next up. Attack on Titan! <laughs> Genocide. What is Attack on Titan known for? Mikasa. Everybody loves Mikasa. Uh, the Titans attacking. Grotesque human-like beings fucking chomping on people. Uh, genocide. Rumbling. Revenge. This, the writing is actually very deep. If you don't think that Attack on Titan has deep writing, you didn't even finish season one, bro. Just, it's so fucking good. Next up, we have... Oh my god. Bro, fuck this show. I love Made in Abyss, though. It's just... Such dark fiction, just absolute despair and tragedy and ugh. And it's and it gets you out of nowhere because the story is centered around these cute little kids going on adventures. Then you realize like these war crimes being done to these kids, and it's just ugh. But truly, I don't think I've ever seen a show where I felt that grossed out or gross teched or like felt like I got like sick to my stomach watching it, but not in a bad way. It's almost like how did the author even think about things like this, you know? Kevin Penkin's soundtrack as well, you know, says that's such a great mood for it. Unfortunately, there's only season 2 content here, but bro, that season 2, the soup arc, the Gordon Ramsay fetus soup arc, what the fuck? That backstory with the soup, I, <laughs> I'm actually getting goosebumps when I'm thinking about it. Like, it's beyond haunting. I remember reacting to it and just being like, what the fuck did I just watch? And if you don't know about it, listen, go watch it. Go watch it. It is just the most grotesque, horrific fucking fiction, bro, I've seen. Next up, Kaguya-sama. The Chika dance is very popular. For sure, Chika 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 is very popular, right? How the fuck does that ribbon stay on our head? I still don't know really about that, but... Chica definitely a fan favorite character. I don't necessarily think she's my favorite character because of the amount of people that just like simp for her. So I try to show some other characters some love. Who do I really like in Kaguya-sama? Honestly, it's very rare that I ever root for a protagonist of a show, but Shirogane. Straight up, I think that Shirogane Miyuki is a very compelling male character in a rom-com. I like him a lot. Ishigami also has great moments. Hayasaka's great, yeah. Honestly, the whole roster is great. There's not really any character that I despise. Even the side supporting characters are great. It's just Chica just dominates due to the sheer amount of popularity. So I'm trying to figure out some other characters that, you know, that may be a little bit left out. But I, I genuinely usually never root for main characters of a show, protagonists. But like Shirogane Miyuki, something about him resonated with me. Just like his, the way that he like perceives life and like the fucking grind that he does. Like, I don't know. It's just very compelling because he's like an average person that like, Works so fucking hard to get close to, you know, the prestige that Kaguya has, but... Next up. Oh! I know about the soundtrack, and I know that the visual novel is got here. But the anime is that bad? Umi no when they cry. Dude, the soundtrack goes crazy, man. But is the anime that bad? I would like to experience this probably through the visual novel rather than the anime then, just like Danganronpa. Well, the Danganronpa, that's more of like a video game than the actual anime. Next up, Shield Hero. <laughs> but yeah, I think that Shield Hero honestly peaked in Season 1. And maybe that's a hot take because I haven't given, you know, Season 3 a chance because of people just not giving a fuck about Season 2 and beyond. But Shield Hero Season 1, in terms of a revenge story, I think Season 1 delivered like minimum 9 out of 10. Like the sheer anger that I felt reacting to Shield Hero due to multi. Holy fuck. Fuck, dude. Holy shit. It was so peak. Like, multi? Yes, she sucks. 
And I get it. Just like Tower of God, Rachel, yes, she sucks. But due to those villains, it creates such just like revenge satisfactory moments. And like season one truly could have just ended there. I don't really know how I feel about Shield Hero and like the way that they're approaching the future seasons by introducing different worlds. I know that like the other world or heroes also were mentioned with that before season one ending, but like I just feels like Shield Hero literally just could have been one season done and would have been like the perfect revenge anime. People would have called it like the pinnacle Isekai revenge anime. And then season two, I think the author himself literally said the Spirit Tortoise arc is like one of the weakest fucking arcs ever I'm up. I apologize for it, right? Like, ugh. Ugh. And I hear season three and beyond, it's actually getting good now. It's just, it's hard to reboot a series when people have already lost interest because they've got filtered out at season two. Next up. Ergo Proxy. I've never heard of this. This looks like a 90s anime, maybe. Known for a complicated plot. I mean, a lot of anime is also complicated, but... Okay. Anything else? Cowboy Bebop! Best classic anime. Yeah, I think a lot of people would say that. I think Cowboy Bebop is one of those timeless classic OGs that a lot of people say is like, you know... And also one of those animes to watch in dub as well, right? So, Cowboy Bebop. Yo, this design is crazy. Holy shit. Yo, what the fuck is this girl wearing? <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, the fan service in the night is going crazy! Uh, the Cowboy Bebop soundtrack is actually amazing. I do randomly listen to, uh, I think Cowboy Bebop, um, the jazz, the... It, it's so groovy, man. Her name is Faye? Okay, oh, oh. Fairy tale. <laughs> and here's another battle shonen that gets shit on a lot, right? Known for the power of friendship. But like, wonder why people shit on fairy tale because of power of friendship, but people don't shit on Beyblade for the power of friendship. Because Beyblade is marketed towards children as a literal children's cartoon. But Fairy Tale is. N when I say children's cartoon, it's a bit different from like a young audience watching Battle Shonen, right? Or did it. Is there, is there a bad way to power fan? Like, power friendship? I don't know. I really want to watch Fairy Tale one of these days and figure out for myself exactly how bad is Fairy Tale because, like, the SAO hate is unwarranted. Those motherfuckers really don't have any idea why they even hate SAO. So I'm trying to figure out, is the fairy tale hate also a hated? Like, I, I, it doesn't have a good reason. Even Black Clover, right? People hate on Black Clover, fairy tale, but a lot of people do definitely hate this whole theme of power of friendship, you know, being the thing that solves everyone's problems at the end of the day. You could think that it's lazy writing, but a children's cartoon like Beyblade, because I'm going in with the expectations that power of friendship is always going to triumph, I guess I'm not really angry, but people watching... You know, reading, you know, fairy tale or watching fairy tale, they'd probably compare it to like One Piece or like Naruto or other shit. Not saying power of friendship doesn't prevail there. It's like power of Nakama, right? And it's like the ninja way and stuff. And the power of friendship definitely does exist, but maybe they overused it, they abused it. I don't know. And that's pretty much it from this list of animes. Please again go give Mr. Anime World a like on the video. Sub to his channel if you haven't, and I'll see y'all in the next one.